Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar about the real-time pump performance dashboard, a new feature we've added to SEM4. My name is Simon Jaags and I'm one of Semiotic Labs founders. I'd like to start today by briefly introducing SEM4's technology for those of you who are not familiar with it. We'll then talk about uh, centrifugal pumps and some of the issues that plague their operation and why it's important to keep your pump running close to the best efficiency point. Then we'll talk about that dashboard, how we implement it and how it helps you to run your pump in a healthy manner and save energy when doing so. With me today is my colleague Derek Benner. Derek is part of our maintenance engineering team and a, an expert on centrifugal pumps. So he'll be available throughout the webinar to answer any of the questions that you type into the Q&A chat box. At the end of the webinar, we'll spend some time on answering the remaining questions. So, without much further ado, let's introduce SEM4. SEM4 is a predictive maintenance system for industrial electric motors and rotating equipment, including centrifugal pumps. It monitors those assets 24-7 to detect upcoming failures at an early stage, so you can schedule inspections, repairs or replacements well before your assets fail. Looking a bit deeper into the technology, SEM4 consists of sensors that install inside the, inside the motor control cabinet, uh, where they generate electrical waveforms. Our data communication unit sends those waveforms to our platform, uh, where we initially start a two to six week learning phase after installation to create a baseline uh, for healthy behaviors of that asset. Once that baseline has been created, your assets are protected. So that when we do detect a failure, three things will happen. First, our maintenance engineering team will work with our data science team to confirm the failure and add perhaps some details to it. We then will alert you using either an email or a phone call if it's urgent um, to alert you of that upcoming failure. And we will update your dashboard so that you have that information available on your tablet, mobile or desktop computer. Talking about the dashboard, here is the detailed asset view with on the left hand side the motor passport or the asset passport I should say that has basic nameplate information and next to it the health status box with both a visual indicator of severity on the left hand side as well as some detailed information about the observed failure including recommended next actions. You also see uh, lots of metrics around performance and energy so running hours, start stops, load and some uh, power quality parameters as well. And this is incidentally where that pump curve lives. But before we start talking about that pump curve, let's talk a little bit about centrifugal pumps. So what they do is, or, or what they are, they, they, they move fluids from A to B. And they do that by converting rotational energy that's provided by the motor into kinetic energy that's provided by the impeller. A fluid hits the uh, pump's casing, um, hits the impeller and is pushed outwards, making it both uh, velocity uh, and pressure uh, as it continues on its way. Now there's quite a few different types of centrifugal pumps. I think the most obvious difference uh, is their size. You get them small and big. Some work submerged, others do not work submerged. They can be single stage or multi-stage and they can be actual radial or a mix. But despite these differences, they have a few things in common. That is that they are great at handling low viscosity fluids and high flow rates. And because of this, they are really an essential uh, uh, piece of equipment in most industries. Amongst them oil and gas, water treatment, chemicals, paper and pulp, fast moving consumer goods. Centrifugal pumps are a critical type of equipment in lots of processes in these industries. But like all uh, industrial equipment, they also fail. And for pumps, that's, that's even uh, more so. Um, misuse, cavitation, um, corrosion, they all can uh, cause things like impellers, bearings and seals to wear out faster than they were intended to do. And that is why it is important to keep your pump operating close to its best efficiency point because that's where the pump has the longest lifetime uses the, uh, 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 um, as little energy as possible uh, of, uh, operates the most efficiently um, so talking about that pump curve what is it and why do i need it well the pump curve and the, and the reliability curve combined in this visual really shows you in a visual way how flow and head are related and how 
operating your pump at various segments of that uh, uh, curve helps you to either reduce unplanned downtime or uh, why you're experiencing many of these failures. So let's unpack this for a bit. Here on the bottom, uh, on the horizontal axis, we have a flow as a percentage of rated flow. And then on the uh, vertical axis, we have head as a percentage of rated or of shut off head. And between that, that blue curve is uh, the pump curve, which is incidentally the relationship or, or gives you visual representation of the relationship between head and flow for this particular pump at this particular speed. A pump can have multiple speeds. In that case, you have multiple pump curves and you also have a best efficiency point. So for this pump, this indicates the, uh, the flow rate at 100% uh, RPM and 60% RPM and, and where that pump is to, uh, designed to run at those speeds. Now, we can also uh, add a, um, a, a sort of a bell-shaped reliability curve and using this, we can indicate where the pump should run. So um, obviously it's best to run it perfectly at best efficiency point, but certainly within minus 10 to plus 5% of the best efficiency point is, 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 is considered best practice. Um, you, can, you can run it typically uh, up to minus 30 and plus 15 within an acceptable range, uh, but go beyond that uh, and, and you're likely going to incur um, failures faster. You compromise the reliability of the pump system as indicated here because if you run it to the left of the flow curve or, or extremely to the right you get those um, you know those issues with cavitation, low seal life, in low impeller life and so on. So you really want to keep your pump running close to the in that in that sort of in that green area ideally as close to the BEP as possible. Now incidentally uh, mechanical seal leakages, bearing failures and worn impellers are the top three of issues that plague a pump's operation. So they're the most observed uh, reasons for unplanned downtime of these pumps. And uh, the root cause of these failures is in most cases, if not all, operating a pump far away from its best efficiency point. So by using an over-dimensioning or under-dimensioning centrifugal pumps. And that's really why it's useful to have a visual representation of your operating points relative to that best efficiency point on your pump curve. Because as you can see on the right, the further away you move from your best efficiency point, the, uh, the, the, the shorter the times are between failures. So you will reduce your MTBF and you really want to have that as long as possible, obviously. Right. And that is exactly what the pump, uh, Samforce pump dashboard will give you. Um, before I dive into that dashboard, one more thing about Sam4. Uh, I mentioned in the opening that it installs inside the motor control cabinet and that it measures electrical waveforms. And when, when it concerns monitoring pumps, I think it has three distinct benefits, the MCSA technology. The first one is that it's simply more accurate in de detecting failures. We're consistently detecting over nine out of 10 failures up to five months in advance across a wide variety of industry and applications. And the fact that we simply detect a lot more relative to your more traditional vibration-based systems that get to 50, you know, 70% for high-end systems is that there's a lot of value in those extra detections. A second big benefit for monitoring pumps is that it installs inside the motor control cabinet and that it's therefore not on the pump. So if you have a submerged pump, the fact that you don't need to install any sensors on it or close to it really allows you to monitor that pump in a cost-effective manner. But it also, it's also a lot easier, for instance, in the chemicals or in the oil and gas industry, where you have lots of pumps operating inside attics or IEX or hazardous areas. So this, the, the motor control cabinet almost by definition sits outside of that hazardous area. So it's easy access, easy to install without all the paperwork and without the risks associated with working in that area, installing all those sensors and so on. And the third one is that it, the current and voltage, the data that we use with SEM4, simply has a lot more information also about uh, energy and performance. And those are useful if you want to uh, 
uh, develop a real-time pump curve such as what we've done because to do that you need um, you need active power uh, here indicated on the uh, left hand side the green arrow on the lower graph you also need to know what speed a pump runs at um, and that is indicated by the curve so the top curve in orange uh, is uh, the curve for the pump operating at 100 percent speed and the one in purple is at 60 percent so if you have active power which is uh, calculated using current and voltage and if you have uh, speed which is calculated using current and the pump specs you can then plot your work point on those on that pump curve using the affinity laws uh, because there's a, a set relationship between head and flow for this pump right so if the pump runs at 30 kilowatts we know it will move about 160 cubic meters of fluid and then we can plot it on the top graph on where it's at at that pump curve and as we can observe it's you know somewhat close to the BEP in this case and, and here it is uh, here is how we present it in the online dashboard so here on the top hand on the right hand side you have head against flow there on the bottom active power against flow and on the left hand side we have those individual uh, metrics presented to you over time with a date box so you can change your uh, the dates at which you look this this data for right now you could ask why is this useful there are two examples so first of all this is a pump uh, a single speed pump that um, where they vary head by uh, by uh, depressing a valve and that is used for instance to start up a pump you 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 close the valve to build pressure before you uh, release the valve and uh, the flow uh, starts to increase which is a fairly common practice but what's also i wouldn't say common but certainly uh, observed in day-to-day -day operations is that you close a valve let the pump build up pressure by pushing against it that can be a very short while uh, so that that's not too bad but if you keep that pre uh, if you keep them operating like that for extended periods of time such as is dinner here over 50 minutes or so that's really unnecessary and starts to degrade the pump faster so you can use this type of data to coach your teams to do better to 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 adhere to these to these best uh, practices so you can you can sure you can close the valve to build a pressure but release that valve not within 20 minutes but within a couple of minutes or so which really extends the pump lifetime so this type of data gives you insights perhaps as to why that pump is failing so often but you can also use it to coach it and this is all time stamped so can, you can even use it to coach a specific shift leader to tell them listen guys we need to really do this in a different manner here is the data that proves us how we can improve and the second uh, example that i have here is this is for a multi-speed pump um, that typically operates around 100 percent capacity or 50 hertz um, but it's quite far away from its best efficiency point and as we observe um, this pump can run at multiple speeds so if we want to keep that same amount of flow close to 800 cubic meters per hour um, but if we provide that flow by running the pump at 70 percent we move our um, operating points closer or almost on the best efficiency point at 70 percent and this is not just extending your pump lifetime it's also saving uh, energy quite massively this is a large pump with lots of running hours so in this case the potential energy savings are 30,000 euros on a yearly basis and this is I'd like to remind you without compromising on flow so it doesn't change the process in any shape or form it just means that you operate that pump at 70 percent instead of 100 percent you get the exact same outcomes in terms of your production process but you save your uh, energy bill considerably 30,000 K on a single pump plus you extend the pump's lifetime because it operates closer to the BEP and it uh, and and so you don't have these worn out impellers bearings and seals and so on now you may wonder all very well and good but it's only useful if it's accurate and frankly it is we tested the accuracy of our solution in an ISO 9906 test setup and as you can see here the observed working points track that curve very very closely 
Uh, also, another visual of that, we asked our friends of Ove Ducom. Uh, they call themselves pump idiots in a, a gentle fashion, and that's how I uh, like to call them as well. They are really uh, in love with pumps, I should say. They tested our technology uh, using that same ISO 9906 uh, dashboard. And as you can observe here, again, the um, work points or that we calculate track the, um, the, the golden standard work points very, very closely. So, in summary, SAM4 uh, added a real-time pump performance dashboard to the feature list. It uses the same data that we use for condition monitoring to provide you with those insights as to where your pump operates relative to that best efficiency point over time. There are many use cases for this type of technology um, um, that will center around increasing performance li pump performance, increasing the lifetime of the pump, as well as reducing energy waste. You can use it to coach your teams or to change processes. Um, and above all, it is highly accurate as observed here. So that was the introduction of Samforce real-time pump performance dashboard. Uh, again, we will, uh, if you have any questions, you can type them in the Q&A chat window now, and I'll give the floor to Derek to answer the first questions. Derek?